How's it going, Giants fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. And today we're discussing the Giants' new signings of Khalil Pimpleton and Tony Jefferson. Some really good uh, players who may be might be able to make an impact this year, honestly. The Giants obviously very thin at multiple positions. Uh, had some trouble kind of finding a kick returner, punt returner during this preseason. You know, CJ Board obviously uh, fumbled one of those kickoffs and maybe Wandale. But I, I get the sense the Giants don't want to utilize some of the more primary uh, impact players because, you know, kick returns, punt returns, you get a lot of injuries on these sometimes. And that's why I've tried to kind of take them away, especially kick returns and just more touchbacks. And, you know, a lot of injuries happen in those situations. So um, it, nonetheless, it is still a very important part of the game. And I think that Pimpleton's pretty uh, interesting in terms of his athleticism. He's dynamic. He's can serve a gadget uh, style. It seems like the guy, the Giants are about a couple of players away from being an entire team full of gadget players. <laughs> they have so many at this point in time. And, you know, adding another one, it can't hurt to have another developmental guy. Of course, he was the hard knocks camp star uh, for the Detroit Lions. And, of course, you know, people were upset that they uh, released him. But uh, lands with the Giants, signs a contract, maybe goes to the practice squad, maybe earns his way onto the, onto the roster. We'll see what happens with him in the coming days. Then, of course, Tony Jefferson, um, who, you know, a lot of experience with Wing Martindale and his defense, pretty exciting player. And I think he could be an impact player for this team moving forward. But at the end of the day, um, he is definitely a reserve at this point. But we'll see what his role can be. We'll discuss his statistics, his experience with Wink, um, what he's bringing to this team, Anthony. Before we do so, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, man. Of course, we've been discussing it. There's going to be a lot of roster shuffling. Giants are going to make cuts. They're going to add guys to their practice squad, release guys from their practice squad. That's basically what's going on here. These two guys that they just added to their practice squad, both super interesting, and it wouldn't shock me to see them called up to the regular season roster at some point. I could see Tony Jefferson playing on the 53-man roster. I could see Khalil Pimpleton playing on the 53-man roster. First of all, what a freaking name. But Pimpleton, having some great kick return uh, capabilities, that's huge for the Giants. Special teams has been a focal point for the Giants over the past few years because it hasn't been a strength of the team. Now, we thought last regime, you know, Joe Judge being a former special teams coordinator, we were all certain that the Giants were going to have an awesome special teams unit. That really never came to fruition. But now the Giants... Maybe they're doing it the right way. I like the new punter that they've got. Casey Kreider is a great long snapper. He's wearing the captain's patch. And now maybe bringing in Khalil Pimpleton. Maybe you got a good returner as well, which I think is super, super valuable to have. I know that returns uh, on kick returns, punt returns, that kind of stuff, having big plays from those individual plays, they're few and far between. I get that. But every now and then you'll get a guy like Khalil Pimpleton who's really good at something, really good at taking kicks or punts to the house, and that can be an X factor in your game. So I like Pimpleton. I know he's only on the practice squad, but I'm excited to see if he's able to develop during practice and maybe find his way onto the final 53-man roster at some point. Absolutely. And you know, looking at his statistics, he was formerly um, an undrafted free agent out of central Michigan. So Pimpleton, you know, five foot nine, 175 pounds, not a big guy, but he is explosive. Good God. He is explosive, man. He can get through the gaps. He can do a lot of things for this team um, if they need him. You know, this is look, we're talking about waiver wire claims here, guys. We're not talking about guys who are going to come in here and make some insane explosive impact. Uh, they're fighting for a chance just to get snaps as a backup, let alone a starter. But this team is incredibly uh, weak at multiple positions. They they need the support where they can get it. Pimpleton has special teams value, which is where the Giants are having trouble finding guys. You know, like that's kind of difficult to stumble upon as a guy that can offer you something as a receiver, um, you know, gadget player, but also, you know, behind the scenes, maybe as a kick returner specialist and punt returner. So uh, during his days with Central uh, Michigan last year, he totaled over 1,000 all-purpose yards with six touchdowns. And if you look at his punt return numbers, dude, this is this is a guy who could make an impact. You're talking about someone who I could, uh, he returned 16 punts over 13 games, and he averaged 19 yards per uh, return with two touchdowns. You know, 19 yards per punt return, guys. Like, we haven't had a player that capable in a very, very long time. You know, um, now I hope that he can catch those punts, especially, you know, NFL kickers, punters. Uh, they're, they're putting monstrous amounts of spin. They're putting a lot. There's a lot more, you know, the crowd ambiance is probably very intense. Um, the football's a little bit bigger. You know, these guys, they know how to make you drop the football ultimately. So I'm um, definitely curious to see how his hands are. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, this is someone who could be an impact player in that specific facet, which is what I'm most curious to see. Um, if you're looking at him right now, what are the chances you think he can make this team and at least provide something on special teams? 
Yeah, I don't think he makes a team instantly. He's probably not playing in week one. But I think, you know, you put him on the practice squad, you get him introduced to a bunch of the guys, a bunch of the players, the coaches, get him comfortable here in the system, comfortable in New York. And I think that eventually you could see Khalil Pimpleton get called up to the regular season roster. Now, I think the practice squad suits him best for now. Young guy doesn't have any regular season experience. Hard Knocks training camp standout for the Lions. That's really where his name is most known from. So I think it's going to take some time before he is ready to be on the 53-man roster. But I do think there's a really solid chance he makes his way up there because he's such a good returner. Because kick returner slash punt returner is technically a position of need for the Giants. I don't really know who is the official designated first string kick and punt returner right now, or if I'm very comfortable with whoever it is. I know CJ Board was that for the Giants. The fumble in the preseason hurt him. He was released by the Giants. So now I think that they're definitely surveying all their options and looking to improve at that position. And I think Khalil Pimpleton, once he gets a little accustomed to New York, gets accustomed to the new coaching staff, I think that he could totally be the kick slash punt returner for the Giants. Like I said, I think it takes a few weeks, maybe week three, maybe week five or 10. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I do think that Khalil Pimpleton is a valuable player to have on your practice squad. And I think for sure one day we'll see him making some returns for the Giants in the regular season. Yeah, absolutely. And moving over to Tony Jefferson, this is a pretty interesting player. Obviously has a ton of experience with Wink Martindale. Um, started with Baltimore back in 2017, was drafted back in 2013 with the Arizona Cardinals, and then played a little bit with San Francisco uh, last year. And, you know, this is a guy who didn't really make much of an impact in 2021. Uh, 29 years old last season, only 18 combined tackles. He had a tackle for a loss, a QB hit, and a pass defended. But his best season probably was in 2000, I'd say, 18, 2014, 96 tackles. Um, with 13 tackles for loss in 2016 as a strong safety. Kind of transitioned to a free safety role with Baltimore the last couple of years, but maybe he can you know, offer a little bit of versatility. I think he ends up being pulled up to the uh, active roster uh, by week one because that secondary could use a little bit of spar. Now we have Julian Love, Xavier McKinney, and Dane Belton. Um, but you know, we could probably use another safety in, in the mix there. I don't know if Dane Belton will be ready for week one. The projections are that he will be, but Jess Jefferson can step right in and, and understands the system. He understands the scheme. Um, you know, they did claim a couple of corners, uh, Justin Lane, and they got Nick McLeod. Uh, but you know, these guys aren't really going to contribute much immediately. I still think the giants would be good to pursue a guy like Jimmy Smith, um, who definitely would be cheap. But the thing is, the Giants have negative $5 million in salary space right now. They don't have money to sign anybody, right? Even if they cut uh, Darius Slayton or traded him, they're only opening up $2.5 million in open and, and available space. So, you know, that's kind of a, an interesting situation where, like, how do you open up this castle? You're talking about restructuring Leonard Williams' deal. And Williams, like, they could move on from him next year at this at this uh, time. If they didn't restructure his deal, they'd save $18 million by cutting him next season. Um, but then again, he has $18 million uh, like base salary if they keep him. So by restructuring, they'd have to really know that they're going to keep Leo next year. They're going to, they'd have to be committed to like, okay, we're keeping him. Then we're going to let him go after the year after that. So if you are restructuring him, you, you kind of have to be careful. You, you, you know, they're, they're going to have to push a lot of money the next season and it's going to take up some more of their uh, flexibility. But then the year after that, they have a lot of room to work with. They can keep the money down for any signings next year. So interesting situation. You know, what are your thoughts on Tony Jefferson and kind of the, the, the secondary here just needing more support ultimately? Yeah, I mean, I still think the secondary needs more support. We talked about a few of the guys that they claimed on waivers yesterday. Bunch of depth guys, bunch of backup that maybe the Giants can turn into something decent as a backup. But overall, the Giants still need more reinforcements in the secondary in my eyes. I think Tony Jefferson was a very solid signing. Shout out his name. I share a name with him. Very cool. Love all the Tonys in the world. But Tony Jefferson is an aging veteran who was signed to the Giants practice squad. He's had knee injuries in the past. I love his familiarity with Wink Martindale. I think that provides him with a lot of value or he provides a lot of value to the Giants because of that. He's got the ability to help some of these guys in the secondary get accustomed to Wink Martindale's scheme, you know, especially those guys that were just claimed off waivers. They didn't have all training camp to get used to, to Wink Martindale's coaching style. So now they get claimed off waivers right ahead of week one. They're going to need a little bit of help getting up to speed. And I think Tony Jefferson can provide that uh, teaching role to them. So I think that Tony Jefferson also is still a solid player. I know he didn't, I think he was injured this past season, didn't play too much, but I know two years ago, he still was very productive for the Ravens. Um, he, he's definitely got the experience necessary to play uh, as a backup for 
Xavier McKinney, for Julian Love. These are young guys. Love and McKinney are not like seasoned veterans out here, right? I think it's third and fourth year for those two. So those are still young guys that are growing and having a guide like Tony Jefferson can only help them. Having some experience on the back end is always useful. The Giants are really, really young in the secondary. Most of their starters are very young underneath the age of 27. So having just this veteran guy who's 30, 31 years old and Tony Jefferson, it can't hurt. It can only help. I think that this was a solid signing. He's on the practice squad. But like I said, I think there's a really good shot that he makes his way onto the 53-man roster at some point this season. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to. Like, this team can't get away from the injuries, man. Like, you look at the receivers. You look at every – like, I was just thinking about it, right? Yeah, I'm not the gym. I'm like, you know, thinking about this offense. And I'm thinking, like, Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Toney, Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard – if these guys like were all considered to be healthy individuals, I think this offense could be top 10. Like we have the playmakers for it. If we had a decent offensive line and all of our playmakers stayed healthy, I think this could be a pretty competent offense. But the problem is like we're constantly battling injuries that I don't even know where the hell they're coming from. Kadarius Tony has been dealing with a lingering leg injury. I don't even know where he got it. They don't even want to tell us what it is. Kenny Galladay had some undisclosed procedure this summer. I, I find out this morning. What the hell is that about? What is the surgeries these guys are having? Nothing has happened to them. It's like, you know, I get the end. I get these players are dealing with like nicks and knacks and whatever it might be. And they get their like, they get their, their ankles cleaned out or their knees cleaned out with arthroscopic surgeries and whatever. But it's just insane to me how these guys are constantly battling stuff that are just not being disclosed. And I can't, you can't trust them to be, to be reliable, which is why you have guys like Khalil Pimpleton getting signed to the practice squad and whatever it might be, because end of the day is we need so many backups who can serve a purpose on this team. And they're all so injury prone. If these guys could stay out, if Kadarius Tony could stay healthy, dude, we're talking about a, a, a probably an elite receiver in the NFL, like straight up. I think he'd be, I think he'd be an elite receiver in the league. If he could stay healthy, all you have to do is give him the ball and he will do everything for you. You know what I mean? We're talking about a guy that can make five, six guys miss uh, in one play, let alone one game. You know what I mean? Like it, it could take guys, the entire season to, to produce five missed tackles. This guy produced five in one game against the New Orleans Saints. Probably two plays he did it. He did it. It's like it's just ridiculous the amount of talent these guys have. But the, the health things, the health reality is just so hard to swallow. Um, and you know, what, what are your thoughts on that specifically? If these guys could stay healthy, are, are you pretty confident this team could be at least pretty competent? I guess on the offensive side. I mean, listen, the Giants did lead the NFL in the preseason with offensive yards per game. Like, clearly the scheme is working. You know, we've had our question marks about certain players, their ability to stay healthy. Daniel Jones is obviously a question mark, the quarterback position. Are these guys going to be sufficient? Can they run the scheme properly? So far, so good. The scheme is working, right? I'm seeing good plays out of the offense. I'm very impressed with Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, what they're running offensively. I really like everything that they've put onto the field. However, you are right. There is a lot of question marks in terms of some of the, the top talents on this team. Team. You know, you just mentioned Kerry's Tony. Can he ever stay healthy? I hope so. I agree with you. He could be an elite wide receiver if he were to stay healthy. Same thing with Kenny Galladay. We've seen him be an elite wide receiver. In 2019, he led the NFL in touchdown reception. So we know that he can be elite if he's healthy. However, that's been the problem for those two. Another thing, Saquon Barkley. Right now, he's healthy. He looks ready to go. I think Saquon Barkley's ready for a monster season. But we've been saying that for the past three years. Can he stay healthy? That's the question mark for all of these guys. Staying healthy is going to be the key to success for the New York Giants season. And you can even apply that same train of thought to Daniel Jones. We think that he looks really comfortable in the new offense. He's playing a lot better than we've seen him play in the past, or at least he was in this preseason. But we've said that before, and we've also said this is his year to break out, make or break. you got to stay healthy, and you got to win. And then he doesn't because a lot of the times he does get injured. Daniel Jones has had a lot of injuries in his career for a young quarterback, and that is definitely something to be concerned about on top of the fact that he fumbles a lot and doesn't make some good throws sometimes, right? So there are a ton of question marks on the New York Giants offense. Do I think it's going to be a competent unit at times, but I think there's going to be times where you see utter incompetency, and it's probably going to be related to the fact that there are players getting injured and there's backups stepping in. The offensive line has a couple of injuries on it too. There's just there's so many injuries for the Giants right now. So, you know, when you don't have solid depth like that and you're calling upon the next man up, but you don't know if you can rely on him, you will run into trouble. There will be games where the Giants offense looks 
really bad, and it's probably going to relate to injuries. In a perfect world, everybody on the Giants offense stays healthy for the entire season. I would love that. I hope that's what happens. It's happened before, but it's very rare to see happen. If you remember back in the day, right, there was guys like Dominic Hickson who started off the year uh, with that one-handed touchdown catch against the Rams. I think that was the year that the Giants won the Super Bowl. Great catch, great game. He gets hurt, blows out his knee. He's done for the year. But the Giants had so much wide receiver depth, it didn't really matter. They still had Victor Cruz. They still had Akeem Nix. They still had Mario Manningham. Dominic Hickson was our punt returner, and he was a solid receiver. So it was a huge loss to the team at the time, at least it felt like. But it was next man up, and the Giants had the depth. They had reliable guys to step in, get healthy, and play some solid football. Do the Giants have that right now? Is their roster that well built from front to back? No, it's not. They don't have that kind of depth. We were just talking about it in the secondary as well. A bunch of no-name guys that have never even played for the Giants before are going to be relied on as the backups. That is not a formula for success. This is the first year of a rebuild. So I think the Giants are rebuilding the right way. I think there's a lot of potential in this roster over the course of the next few years. But for year one of this rebuild, year one of the Brian Dable experience, I think there's going to be a lot of peaks and valleys, probably more valleys than peaks if we're being completely honest about it. So don't get your hopes up too high. I definitely think there's a reason to believe in Brian Dable's offensive scheme. There are going to be really explosive games out of this offense. I truly believe that. But that only happens when everybody's healthy. When, when we start to lose that health, we don't have the depth to back it up, right? Colin Johnson, done for the year. He would have been a great depth piece, probably gets a lot of playing time in the regular season tears his Achilles he's done for the year so you just got to keep that in mind there's a lot a lot to keep in mind here with the Giants offense in terms of the injuries and the health but overall you ask me will it be competent like I said at times but there's going to be times where you see plain incompetence yeah look I said this yesterday um and the best way I can spin this is this is what a rebuild looks like and um, I'm just happy that we're following the true and tried strategy of rebuilding the right way inside, instead of trying to cover it all up with big free agent signings and you know the the quote that joe shane had this morning and he's like this is the hand we were talking about the cap space and like kind of the state of the roster and he's like this is the hand we were dealt uh you know we have to kind of go through these hoops and whatnot and i'm like this is like the most professional way of saying dave gettleman absolutely screwed us like absolutely this like they really let him sign all these big contracts smile and then retire into the sunset, you know, with a happy grin on his face, brought his whole family out to the last game where the Giants absolutely got railed out. And then, and then, you know, quarterback sneaks on third down and he's sitting there having a blast with his family and friends. And I'm like, this is the low of the low. It can't get worse than this. Our general manager is enjoying his day watching what he just put on the field for us. Uh, a $4 billion franchise with some of the most dedicated fans on earth. One of the most, lucrative franchises on the planet of any sports team and our general manager is laughing and enjoying his day while we have to suffer here and watch this shit piece of shit team you know what i mean that moment for me was like i i i could i actually haven't recovered from it just yet i'm still mad i'm still pissed off i'm like some people in the comments history were like alex like you're, you've been like really negative lately and i'm like that's because i feel like we deserve to be you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we deserve to be mad. We deserve to be objective at this point. Like, we've earned the right to be like, I don't trust anyone anymore. Like, I have faith in Brian Dable and Joe Shane. I don't trust them yet. You know what I mean? I'm happy that they're the people. I feel like they're the right people, but they got to earn my trust, man. I've been battered. I've been bruised. It's like being in a relationship with three consecutive girls or or boys that you that just consistently cheat on you. And you're like, every time you're like, what is happening? Like, what am I doing wrong here? Like, why are you doing this to us? This is what it feels like having Joe Judge and Shermer and Gettleman the whole time. It feels like just being constantly cheated on over and over and over again. And now we're sitting here like, all right, this seems like we're in a good relationship now, but I don't, I don't, I have trust issues after all the, all the shit we've been through. So that's kind of the best analogy I can give you guys. But I, I do feel positive in the sense that I think we have found the right people to get the job done. We're modernized now. We're using technology instead of a 1990s fucking a uh, cream folder to keep our draft notes in. So I, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, it's not a computer to monitor, monitor anymore. It's a whole screen full of data. I'm happy about this. This is where the NFL is right now. We're in the modern ages. Finally, we've upgraded uh, to all these things instead of, you know, Dave Gettleman with a notebook and a, and a, a desktop from 1940. So like this is, this feels right. It feels like we're on the right track and I, I am happy about that. So just wanted to clarify. 
um, the state of my feelings and you know frustration. But I hope you guys enjoy this episode discussing uh, Tony Jefferson, Khalil Pimpleton, and what they are bringing to this New York Giants squad. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Would love to hear perspectives and narratives below about these specific guys. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Thank you.